Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Asteroid Hunter Control Center. My name is Mike, my son Brandon behind the camera. What an epic day it is today. I don't know how we got here, to be honest with you. It's been like a year and a half. We started, my son and I used to set up in the driveway. We'd take our Burnham Celestial handbooks. We'd set them out there and look through our eyepiece and, and look through the, the books and just discuss what we were seeing through the eyepiece. And then about a, just over a year ago, we said, let's get into this asteroid science thing. And uh, this really started as a father and son just wanting to spend time together. And here we are today. Somehow the holy grail of all telescopes has ended up in our, uh, our garage slash observatory slash control center. Um, what an epic day it is today. We are going to unbox the Raza 14. And uh, I don't think there's any unboxing videos of a Raza 14 out there. So maybe we're the first. I know we're very few people in the world that are using this instrument for science. Uh, so this is our new addition to our observatory. Um, as many of you know, we take observations for the Minor Planet Center. Uh, we also work with world, vari uh, worldwide variable star hunters and do test stuff. So we have uh, uh, work on exoplanet research as well. And we're doing it all out of our backyard, man. So uh, shout out to our friends at OPT for taking care of us on the Raza here that we have. Unbelievable. Um, so today we're going to unbox it. We have a Twitch stream that you guys can check out as well. We uh, stream live on Twitch. You guys can see us taking those observations. We also, obviously, the YouTube channel that you're seeing here. We also have Instagram and Twitter. So please follow those if you can. And uh, you can share in the adventures of my uh, my son and I as we, uh, we continue this incredible science and build this community that we have. So here it is, the Raza 14 unbox for you. Stick around, check it out. All right, guys, here it is. The Raza 14, new in the box. We're gonna open it right here in the uh, garage that we have. I'm still speechless, I just can't believe it. So uh, an incredible instrument, very rare. As many of you know, the Raza line is very popular. An uh, incredible system of astrographs that they have, the eight, the 11, and now the 14. Uh, this thing shoots at f2, just like that, but it's got a little bit uh, a stronger focal length on it. it shoots at 790-ish millimeters, I think, is what I read. Uh, the 11 is a 600 and, and change. As, as many of you know, we've been running the 14 with the Hyperstar, which is essentially the very, very similar system, but this actually has a Hyperstar kind of built into it because uh, it's solely for imaging and uh, not... not uh, um, not, you know, with the 14, we were able to do visual as well, and we put the Hyperstar in it. The system worked really well, but uh, this is a whole different class of instruments. So here it is, the 14. Let's do it. Raza 14, there it is right there. Holy grail of astrographs. I didn't even refer to it as a 14, they call it the 36, because I know pretty much the majority of the world uh, uses a different measurement standard than we do, so. Uh, but this is indeed a 14 inch, but 36 size aperture on this thing and again shoots at f2 um, just an unbelievable unbelievable instrument and i know the uh, uh the focal length's about 700 700 and change really nice focal length a little bit tighter than an actual 11. Um, i think things like the orion's nebula would really just fill the whole frame uh in there on this thing um I think if you look online, you can actually, the astronomy calculators and stuff, put in this instrument and it'll show you the actual field of view. I think the field of view, from what I read, is 1.98 degrees. I could be wrong on that, but it's somewhere in there as well. So um, not quite as, as, as wide field as like an 11, uh, but again, a little bit tighter focal length on this thing. So. so we'll just kind of go through these boxes here and see what they got.
I have no idea. All right, here's the, the actual camera adapters. Uh, I believe the M42 or something is what I believe. Uh, the actual camera adapters that are gonna go on the actual front of the instrument itself. Our friends there at uh, Dean, shout out to our friends at Starzona. They're gonna be uh, uh, hooking us up with a, with a little bit of a camera adapter to get the correct back focal length for the QH, QHY 600 that we have. Um, so again, you guys always make sure when you're purchasing these things, you are trying to figure out what your camera is. Uh, the majority of the time, these adapters will work. But uh, you know, the, if you're uh, if you're running a bit, little bit different camera, you may may need a little bit different uh, back focus uh, adapter on these things. So just make sure you're uh, seeing what you what you need to get on those. Uh, this is the stopper that goes on the front there. Little safety stop. You know, I can never understand. I saw these in, uh, in some other videos out there. So there's an actual fan on the back of this thing that helps cool, cool the mirror. <laughs> For some reason, Celestron runs this adapter with, with battery power. I don't, I don't honestly know why. So uh, to, to purchase this class of instrument and get this in there, I, I kind of wish Celestron would step up their game a little bit, put an actual uh, correct uh, power adapter in there. I was, I was interested to see if I was gonna see that. I'm kind of shocked that I did, so. Uh, we will not be using that. But again, we're, you know, we're here in Southern California, guys, so uh, we don't get extreme deltas and uh, temperature fluctuations like a lot of people do around the, around the globe, actually. So uh, we're pretty fortunate. Things stay, tend to stay pretty stabilized here. So we are in the summertime, and uh, it, is getting pretty, it will get to 100 plus degrees. We have an in, our uh, observatory is insulated and ventilated and stuff. We have fans in there that blow during the day, keep things uh, uh, cool. So at night, if I open up the um, actual roof and we may be using the fan, but there's not, there's not a huge uh, fluctuations that we have as far as the temperature goes. So I don't know how much of this we will be using, but we'll see. For a 14, basically I would, I would essentially uh, our edge, I could open the roof and within an hour or so things were, things were cooled down pretty, pretty nicely. So. Things a beast takes up just about every bit of the box. I believe that uh, what I read, this is actually 12 inches longer than a standard 14, uh, this instrument. We actually had to do some construction on our observatory <laughs> to make room for this thing. Because uh, as many of you seen on our stream, you know, we're, our, everything's just within inches of tolerance is what we have from the walls and the roof and everything. So we actually had a guy come out and, and extend our observatory uh, about 16 inches a little bit to make room for this. So, um, so it is actually uh, about 12 inches longer than the 14. I believe the diameter is exactly the same from what I've seen on their, uh, on their spec sheets, as far as I know. So, um, I pull this stuff off here a little bit. There it is. Browser 36. Unbelievable. This thing's a monster, guys. It's a monster. It weighs about 25 pounds more than the 14 inch. So it's gonna take every bit of my son and I's power to get that thing up on our uh, mount. We are still gonna be using our CGE Pro, uh, which will do just fine in this. The thing has a 100 pound capacity on it. So um, this is about 75 pounds is what this uh, scope weighs. Pretty close to that. So, um, so that's what we'll be running with it. So there's the unboxing, guys. What we're gonna do is we're gonna actually, uh, I'll shoot another video here. Or actually, we'll, are we gonna continue this on? We'll continue this unboxing on. We're gonna get this thing up on the actual mount of, uh, itself in the observatory so you guys can see it in all its glory on there. So uh, we're gonna stop down here, stop the cameras down, and then we're gonna get this thing mounted up in the observatory, man. Stick around.
Let's glory up on the mount. My son and I, it took us a little bit. We got up on the mount. We actually balanced it on the tripod. I mean, it's pretty close. The balance is real close, actually. We still got to get the camera on and stuff to get the balance proper and still tweak a few things, put the, um, uh, got any kind of guide scope. We're not going to run one right now because the fact is we shoot asteroids, man. We do 15 to 30 second exposures on this stuff. So, uh, we actually guide with the mount, uh, 99.9% .9 of the time. Anytime we're doing test observation stuff, then we tend to use a guider. Uh, but for right now, we're going to just run it as is. We have it on the CGE Pro mount. We're hoping to get our hands on a, a 1100 uh, GT from Astrophysics. Uh, but the CGE Pro is compatible up to 100 pounds. Scope weight 75 pounds. There it is, man. All its glory. It's unbelievable, right? It's like a bazooka, man. It's like, like the. <laughs> it's unbelievable. This thing. So. Um, just an incredible, incredible instrument. F2, 790-ish millimeters, I believe what it is. So there it is, guys, the uh, the Raza 14. I know there's very few uh, uh, pictures and information on the internet, so we're uh, we're so happy to share it with you guys so you can kind of see it. But uh, about 1.98 degree field of view, F2. We're gonna be capturing so many photons with this thing. It's gonna be unbelievable. We are gonna be getting into doing some sky survey stuff. We have some guys down in um, uh, Brazil that we're working with that uh, have written some great sky survey software and they're gonna be helping us uh, out with that. So kind of when the sun's going down, we're gonna be kind of searching for some comets and doing some stuff. And then we'll, during the night, we'll do our normal observations on uh, anything coming out of Atlas or uh, uh, the Catalyst Sky Survey and all those guys uh, as well. So um, we're gonna just continue on, man. We'll be uh, posting all kinds of stuff. You guys, we stream on Twitch. Uh, right now, we're going to be streaming Wednesdays and Sunday nights, so check us out, man. We we will stream live, us doing the observations so you guys can see it on Twitch. Check us out. Follow our Instagram channel. We have a Twitter as well. And uh, support us, like us, give us thumbs up, all the good stuff, man. We appreciate all the support from around the world that we get. I get questions every day around the world from people and comments, and, and it's, an, it's an incredible thing, man. And I just can't believe that this from a father and son just wanting to spend time together has turned into this. Thank you so much to our guys, our friends at OPT for uh, helping us out through this. Uh, Dustin and all the crew down there, man, you guys rock so much. So there it is, guys, the Raza 1436. Raza 36 is what I should call it. I know that's uh, uh, much better in, uh, in, the, in the world of the uh, measuring systems is, is the way to do it. So we're gonna get that QHY 600 on there and uh, we're gonna be rocking and rolling. So there it is, guys. Thanks again for checking out the channel, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again. Take care.